You're listening to the Engaged Club podcast, where we believe that engagement of members, staff, and managers is the key to a thriving club. Our aim is to help you become a better club manager by giving you practical, actionable club management and marketing advice. I'm Roger Kincaid. I'm the marketing director at Off Course Golf. We make member and customer engagement tools for club managers that make growth and prosperity their business. You can find out more about what we do at offcourse.golf. And I'm Jim Hope. I've been managing clubs and working in the hospitality business for nearly 40 years. I now proudly serve the members of the Derrick Golf and Winter Club in Edmonton, Alberta as their GM and COO. Jim, this is the second episode uh, in a two-part series, your conversation with Frank Benzacour uh, about his book, 12 Golden Keys to Hospitality Excellence. Yeah, that was, as we talked about in the first part, that was a whole bunch of fun. And, and in this part, we're going to talk about embracing change, which is key number four, and innovator die, which is key number 11, and happened to be my favorite uh, chapter in the book. Oh man, I, I can completely see why. It's really interesting the way that uh, Frank talks about these two topics in total fearlessness, right? Like not only saying that, you know, it's it's imperative uh, that we embrace change and it's imperative that you do what you can to keep your club at the forefront, but he also seems to be like really optimistic about it and, and the opportunity that innovation uh, kind of gives. Did, did you feel that way talking to him? Yeah, absolutely no question. It was interesting because Frank worked at clubs on the East Coast of the United States, which were you would probably call stayed clubs. You know, these are clubs that have strong histories, yet they were embracing change. And he was, um, you know, bringing that forward with the board. And they recognized that without embracing change, without innovating, they may not survive in the marketplace. Exactly. You know, change is, is a conduit to survival. All right. Now, be sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode. Uh, we've got something very special from Frank uh, right at the very end of this episode. And you're going to want to stay tuned for that. The Engaged Club Podcast is supported by the Canadian Society of Club Managers. Now on to our guest, Frank Benzikor. Frank, talk about, if you can, Embrace Change. This was uh, number 11, I'll tell you, which was Innovator Die, which we're going to get to, was my favorite key in the book. But um, the fourth key, which uh, which was Embrace Change, and, and you talk about the fact that change is consistent in the hospitality industry and it impacts customers, managers, employees. So can you talk about the change that you've seen over your time in the industry and and maybe some of the challenges you've seen some clubs have in embracing that change and, and, and what happens with the clubs that do embrace it? Well, as you can imagine, you know, the club industry changes all the time. And I my advice to club managers and club leaders is to truly embrace change because we struggle all the time within the club industry in particular is uh, whether to embrace the change or stay faithful to traditions. And that is something that I think most club managers struggle with. So my advice to them is really to embrace change and see what's happening with the new trends that are happening throughout the country and see if you can implement them at your property because they are working somewhere and that's where the future is. Um, Tradition is very important and I think that to remain in contact and in touch with events that were, happened years ago and things that, you know, this is all very important. But to uh, to add a level of change to it, to ha- add another level of uh, innovation, I think is very important. And, you know, this key obviously is very similar to key number 11, um, yet I think they're different, but they have some similarities. But again, embracing change, I think, is very important in this industry if we want to survive. Well, you know, and I don't think you need to look any further than the Augusta National and the Masters Golf Tournament. I mean, there is no more traditional club in America than Augusta National. Um, yet what, what they do with that tournament on an annual basis, wh- whether it be the way they do tickets, the, the merchandising, the, the on course experience that guests have, they, you know, they were the first ones to go to, you know, 60 minutes of, of, of full coverage without any ads. Their, their social media presence during the Masters is incredible. Their app and the way you can watch this, the tournament online, um, not through CBS, but online is, uh, you know, absolutely, uh, the best in the business, yet it's probably, it is, would be one of, if not the most traditional club in America. Agreed. I mean, uh, as I said earlier, club leaders really have to walk a fine line with their uh, innovation projects while maintaining the tradition that kept them around for so many years. And that's really 
the the challenge that we face each and every day. You're right. I think about maintaining the threads of those traditions while still making them current and exciting to the members, especially because the younger members of the club are, are want something different than the older members, would you say? Absolutely. And that's really the biggest challenge that we face each and every day is to really please the young members while not alienating the older members or more established ones and vice versa. So uh, it's a, it's again that fine line that we as club managers have to walk every day and make sure that you we're doing the right thing each and every time because as you can imagine we're always as good as our last service. Yeah, I think it's that that's spot on. Now chapter eleven, I said this from the very beginning, Frank. This was my favorite chapter in the book. I'm a fan of of innovation and doing things differently. So talk about that, would you? Just about how important you think it is to innovate at your club. It's you know it's like it says it in the title. It's do it or die. Innovation is right now the most important thing in the club industry. I think that club leaders should definitely have innovation meetings with the staff where they, you know, I actually created what I call the safe zone, uh, which is a room where we meet in with different department heads and no idea is considered a stupid idea. You can say whatever you want. Nobody's laughing at you. Uh, That's hence the, the name safe zone. It's basically an innovation meeting where people can think about anything they want outside the box that will help us be on the cutting edge, be uh, the sharpest uh, in the industry. And you will be surprised, you know, what great ideas can come up with from those meetings. And, and that is something that has served me very, very well. I'm very proud of that uh, about that chapter. I'm very proud of the history of it and how it came about and all the meetings that I had with the staff, we came up with some terrific ideas and I, I, I sincerely think there should be competition in the industry about the most innovators uh, that, that uh, should be one of the big things with the CMAA or with the Canadian society that they should reward the biggest innovators because it is absolutely the future. And if you don't do it, as the title says, you will die. You know, Frank, one of the, our previous podcasts, and it was one that Roger did, was he said that every club should have an experimentation budget. And depending upon the size of your club can be the size of that budget. So let's say at my club, it was a $5,000 budget. And that was for any idea that somebody came up with that we wanted to try, that we didn't have to put an ROI on. It was just, you know, as you say, you're in that innovation meeting with the team. And he says, you know, I'd like to be able to put red licorice on the first tee um, for our members. And I think if we do that, we're going to get this from it. And as opposed to saying, well, whose supply budget is going to come out with you say, go buy as much red, red licorice as you need and give that a whirl. Or I want to implement this app at the club. And you've got this experimentation budget that you can just take it out of that is just, it's free flowing out without anybody um, uh, sort of judging you on it. And I think that speaks to your innovation and die, right? Is that What do you think of that idea of having that kind of a budget line for in a club? I think I love it. I think it's a great idea. I do believe that there must be a discussion about ideas because you can't just run away with any idea. Uh, it has to be a discussion. And if there is a consensus in the room um, amongst uh, the club managers, the department heads, that it's a great idea, I definitely support it. And I definitely uh, think it's worth experimenting with it because at the end of the day, we are in the experience business, and if you create new experiences, members will love it and will continue to come back for some more. I think you're, you're absolutely right. And one of the things that Roger talked about with that experimentation budget is that, you know, you've got to lay out what your outcome is. What is the, what is the purpose for why you want to do this, try this experiment? And then because you need some judges to, some, some piece that you can judge on whether it worked or not. But Frank, I just, I... I, 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 when I got to chapter 11, I reread it a second time because it just, it's sunk into my heart that, uh, like you said, um, either you, you innovate or die and, and managers who aren't innovating are going to die. Their clubs are and they will as well at their clubs. So good on you for writing that. That was spectacular. Thank you, Jim. Wow, Jim, that was a great interview. And, um, you know, some really fearless stuff there. I like the way Frank uh, really kind of instructs us to embrace change, to not fear it, and to actually, you know, push for it too, to let our boards, let our members, let our staff know that, hey, guys, we got to be constantly evolving if we're going to be able to deliver that hospitality experience that our members deserve. 
Yeah, Roger, one of the things that Frank said that really stuck with me is that change is constant in the hospitality industry. And, you know, we are the club in clubs, we're in the hospitality industry and our members are out in the marketplace all the time and seeing what they're doing. And I call it in the free world. And, you know, they want us to be there with them. They love the traditions of our club, but they also want to know that we're going to be innovative and we're going to stay creative and we're going to re- bring, bring things to them. They're going to enhance their experience at the club. And, and Frank supports that and creates an environment for his team where they're free to do that without any repercussions if things fail. Because failure is actually success because it means you're trying something. Right. And how did you like that safe room concept? Hey, like just getting everyone together and saying, all right, there's no bad ideas here. Let's just throw stuff at the wall. Yeah, there was a, somebody else I know did a podcast on that, similar to that, <laughs> um, about a budget line item that you might want to do be able to do things yeah. like that any is that ringing a bell with you at all roger well i appreciated that you mentioned that past episode in the in the conversation with frank yeah no i i mean and i i, I just think what what stuck with me with that was what frank, what frank was saying is look you've got to give people the opportunity to be able to free will their thinking come up with ideas um you know we do an roi on it but be able to engage them to bring those ideas forward and know that if it fails uh, they're not going to be looked at failures. They're going to be looked at successes because of the fact they tried something different. Absolutely. Now, uh, a couple of really special announcements here. First of all, uh, just like we said at the end of the last episode, and if you've listened to both of these episodes, these two parts of conversation with Frank Benzikor, uh, the entire hour-long interview with uh, Jim and, and Frank is on our website, uh, but it's not available in podcast form. So if you send an email to uh, hello at engagedclub.com, we'll make sure that you get the link to the entire discussion. Certainly something that uh, has some value you know, for you to kind of put on in the background while you're going through your work day or maybe even just sort of uh, listen to in some quiet time. And uh, Jim, Frank, really cool guy. He has agreed to give away five uh, books, five copies of his book, 12 Golden Keys to Hospitality Excellence. So if you would like a copy of Frank's book, same thing, just send an email to hello at engagedclub.com. And the first uh, five that send us an email that just says Frank's book in the subject line, uh, we'll make sure that Frank is able to send you, a, I think he's going to send a downloadable copy of his book to you. That's awesome. I, I can't thank Frank enough. I'll make sure I go online and email, send Frank an email and thank him for that. That's great. And those who get the book are going to love it. Um, it was a great read. And as a club manager, uh, there's lots of valuable takeaways for you. We really hope this episode is a big help to you. If you know somebody else that could benefit from this episode, please share it and let's grow together. Yeah, the archive of this podcast is available at engagedclub.com, where you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Slack space for more discussion. And of course, we'd always like to hear your thoughts, questions, ideas, comments, anything you have to say via email at hello at engagedclub.com. Thanks for listening.